Well, let's see if we can do another example of a linear recurrence relation that's homogeneous. So we want to still look at the homogeneous cases. Eventually, we'll, we'll, we will get to non-homogeneous, but they're a tad bit harder. So let's do uh, another one. Here's another example. Example. Solve the linear recurrence relation. This one will be a little more uh, complex, maybe. Not too bad, but here's a recurrence relation. A sub n is defined to be 2 a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 minus 2 a sub n minus 3 for n greater than or equal to 3. And we're going to have actually three initial terms given. We're going to have a 0 to be 3 a1 to be 6, and A2 to be 0. So you have three initial terms, 3, 6, and 0, and then you can find A3 using the recursive definition of the sequence. All right, so the first things first, let's find our characteristic equation. We'll use red for that. So we're looking at a degree of 3 here. Why degree 3? So notice when you're looking at your recursive sequence, here we have an n minus 3, though. So the degree is going to be 3. So we're going to start off on the left side with an r cubed equals 2 r squared plus r minus 2. So that corresponds to what the coefficients of your recurrence relation, right? Your coefficients are 1, 2, 1, negative 2. And that's what we have for our characteristic equation, right? 1, 2, 1, negative 2. Now to solve this, you want to get everything on one side. So you want 0 on the right. So you keep r cubed on the left. Subtract 2r squared. Subtract r. Add 2. And you get 0 on the right. So to solve this, what I can do is I can do a little factoring by grouping. I can group these together, right? r cubed minus 2r squared. And I can group these together right here. I'm going to have, what, minus r plus 2. And out of the first pair, the first pair right here, I can factor out a r squared, which leaves me with what? r minus 2. And out of the second pair, I can factor out a negative 1, right, which leaves me with r minus 2. And that's all equal to 0. So it looks like we have a r minus 2 in common between our terms. So we're going to take out an r minus 2 out front. And it looks like we're left with a purple r squared minus 1. And we can factor r squared minus 1, right? Let's leave the r minus 2 out front. And the r minus 1 is a difference of two squares, right? r plus 1, r minus 1 is the factorization for that. So it looks like we're going to get three distinct roots here. Let's set our factors equal to 0. 0 product property at work again. Uh, factors, or the roots are 2 negative 1 and 1. So we get three distinct roots. Three distinct roots, right? We had a degree 3 equation. We got three distinct roots. 2, negative 1, and 1. So when you have three distinct roots, we know how to deal with this. You're going to set up a form for your solution. Form of the solution. And that form is going to be what? A sub n equals alpha 1. You take your first root, which is 2, raised to the nth power, plus alpha 2 times your second root, which is negative 1, 
raised to the nth power plus alpha 3 times your third root, which is going to be 1 to the nth power. Now, that last 1 to the nth power, that's kind of uh, inconsequential, right? That's just 1. So we can actually rewrite this a little bit. Let's rewrite this as a n equals alpha 1 times 2 to the n plus alpha 2 times negative 1 to the n plus alpha 3, right? We really don't need to worry about this 1 to the n right here. 1 to the n is just 1. So we have the form of our solution. So now what we have to do, we have to find a1, a2, and a3. I'm sorry, alpha1, alpha2, and alpha3. So how will we do that exactly is the question. How will we do that? We're going to have to go back and look at our initial conditions. We had three initial conditions. Where were they? Right here. A0 is 3. A1 is 6. A2 is 0. So we're going to figure out what alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 are based on these initial conditions. Let's see if I can remember that. 3, 6, and 0. 3, 6, and 0. Okay, where am I going to write that? So we're going to find... Alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3, based on the initial conditions. All right, so we're going to have three equations. So A0, remember A0, that was 3. A1, that was 6. And A2 was 0. Let's see, did I do that right? Did I write that down correctly? 3, 6, and 0. Yep, 3, 6, and 0. So if we're focusing on A0 first, so that means you're going to plug a 0 into your form, the form of the solution. So you're going to have alpha 1 times 2 to the 0 power plus alpha 2 times negative 1 to the 0 power plus alpha 3. It's not squeezing in very well, is it? Alpha 3. Okay, so then you focus on A1, so you're going to plug 1 in for N in your form for your solution. So you're going to have alpha 1 times 2 to the 1 plus alpha 2 times negative 1 to the 1 plus alpha 3. And then for A2, you're going to plug 2 in for N in the form of your, of your solution. So you're going to have what? Alpha 1 times 2 to the 2 plus alpha 2 times negative 1 to the 2 plus alpha 3. I'm going to scroll just a little bit. No, I'm going to go to the side here. Simplify this. So this is what? Alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 3. It's the first equation. All right, 2 to the 0 is 1, negative 1 to the 0 is 1. So we're going to have what? 2 alpha 2 minus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 6. Right, because 2 to the 1 gave us the 2 for the alpha, alpha 1 here. That's an alpha 1. Uh, negative 1 to the 1 gives us the negative 1 coefficient on alpha 2. All right, now for the last equation, we're going to have what? 4 a1, alpha 1, sorry, 4 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 0. It's because 2 squared gave us the 4 on the alpha 1 coefficient, and negative 1 squared gave us 1 on the alpha 2 coefficient. 
So what we have is basically a system, a system of three equations, a system of three equations and three unknowns. Now you can do all this by hand, but I'm going to do this using uh, matrices. So we can set up uh, what's called an augmented matrix. So an augmented matrix is a nice way to deal with a linear system. So you're going to have for your first column, the alpha 1 uh, variables, you're going to have coefficients 1, 2, and 4. And for the alpha 2 variables, you're going to have coefficients 1, negative 1, and 1. Alpha 3 variables, you're going to have coefficients 1, 1, 1. And then the right-hand side of your, your equation, after this line here, we're going to write 3, 6, 0. And then what we're going to do, we're going to reduce this matrix. We're going to do RREF, which can use a calculator for that, reduced row echelon form. So I'll use my calculator for that. When I use my calculator, I've already done this in a calculator. I'm going to get 1, 0, 0 in my first column, 0, 1, 0 in my second column, 0, 0, 1 in my third column. And in the far right, we're going to get negative 1, negative 2, 6. So what this is telling me, this is telling me that alpha 1... So here we have what the, the coefficient here for alpha 1 is 1. That's going to give me negative 1. Alpha 2, here's the coefficient here in the second row, second column for alpha 2. It's 1. 1 alpha 2 is going to give me negative 2. And then for alpha 3, let's see if I go to the third row, third column, the coefficient is 1. So 1 alpha 3 is going to give me 6. So if I were to have solved that system of three equations and three variables by hand, I would have gotten alpha 1 is negative 1, alpha 2 is negative 2, alpha 3 is 6. Now I'm going to plug those back in to my form, to my form, to actually find the, the true solution, the exact solution. So here's going to be the solution back here. It's going to be what a sub n is equal to negative 1 times 2 to the n plus negative 2 times negative 1 to the n plus 6. So what did we do right there? Well, we literally just plugged in place of alpha 1. We plugged in negative 1, which we found. For alpha 2, we plugged in negative 2 which we found, and for alpha 3, we plugged in a 6. Yeah, so that one's a little more difficult.